Hello and welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, King of Do. Today we're going to take a quick look at the Consensus 2017 agenda and uh, discuss just what the key topics are going to be and what potentially could go down. Uh, I'll mention a few key speakers that may or may not reveal some interesting things. Um, so, And I'll also make sure you guys know what times that those are happening at in case some big news breaks. I will also be doing um, a pretty high level overview. Um, I went ahead and went through every single Microsoft partner that I could find. Um, I even got on GitHub and went through all of the ones that actually aren't uh, even being uh, marketed very well or published that they're working on getting onto the Azure platform. So I wanted to make sure I go over all of those with you um, so you're in the know. Um, I also think that if you're going to align um, any of your priorities of research on certain cryptocurrencies, blockchain technologies, um, you should probably do it um, in order of like actual application. Like, can it actually be used today? Can it be used tomorrow? Is it is it something that's already solving problems? Um, and a lot of the uh, uh, technologies are, are getting onto the Azure platform. Um, and that's critical. So if you're not familiar, Azure is essentially a platform for uh, apps for developers. Um, so if you know someone in IT, go ask them. Start up a conversation. They're going to know what it is. They could actually show you which um, applications are live in the Azure marketplace right now. And um, But there's more coming, and I'm going to be talking about those as well. So, so make sure you subscribe if you want to hear that, because I'll be doing that soon. I stayed up way too late looking at all of them and uh, I even invested in some after doing my research so um, we'll be talking about that um, so let's get right to it but first real quick I woke up this morning we broke 400 subscribers you guys are blowing my mind we're definitely on pace to hit that short-term goal of 500 this weekend which kind of blows my mind um, so I guess you know we're going to have to throw a party. We're going to have to do something. Um, I can't believe it. So appreciate you guys very much for tuning in. And I appreciate the support. The donations. The um, You guys are using the Amazon link. There have been three purchases using the Amazon links. Uh, maybe you guys are getting the Ethereum t-shirts. It's a super cool t-shirt. I bought one. It looks good. It looks cool. Um, no one's asked me about it quite yet. About what it means. But... <laughs> It looks cool when you wear it. Um, so, anyhow, guys, the support means the world to me. But we can talk more about that later because I could talk about it all day because um, I appreciate it so much. But here we go, Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. And what we're going to be looking at um, is I'm going to kind of just go over uh, the titles of the agenda. You can find this yourself at coindesk.com. Um, and there should be a link there to Consensus 2017. Consensus 2017 is going to be held in, uh, at the Marquise in New York City. And um, if you haven't been before, essentially that is like the premier place in Times Square to have these conferences. Um, I've attended one myself for a premier programmatic advertising conference. And it is the bee's knees of uh, places to have a conference. Um, best in class facilities best in class um after parties i've never been to an after party like that um for any event and i've been to quite a few now um it it was awesome and uh, maybe you've been to times square um it's actually inside of the building that has the largest um digital screen in times square it's like you know it's probably like three to five stories high um it's crazy large and it's about a full block long. Um, so it's in that building, um, and if you're curious where it's at. Um, and uh, that's, that's typically the place where the best-in-class industry-leading conferences are held if you're going to hold one in New York. So um, this is the real deal. Uh, it's supposed to be um, pretty, pretty high-end stuff, uh, bringing the best minds in the world together. Now, all that being said, I do understand that some people out there have a negative connotation to Coindesk, the people that put it on. That's a long story, and that's besides the point, because 
you you know they can publish and say whatever they want and i understand both sides of the argument if you're for or against them whatever but um i want to put that aside because that doesn't matter right what matters is that we have thought leaders that are getting up in front of us and they're going to be sharing the the future of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency um and there's some key topics that um that i'll go through here and you guys will see kind of a reoccurring theme come up so so uh m basically monday morning it's just kind of opening up with a general um welcome and then they're going to move right into uh going global um so basically they're going to be talking about blockchain investment around the uh, around the globe um they're going to be talking about um, how to promote your business to get the best talent, things like that, um, because that's what's really cool about this, guys, is that if you haven't uh, really got into this yet and understand that a lot of these projects are decentralized in and of themselves in that um, the people working on them aren't in the same room together. They don't go to work together every day. They're all over the world. A lot of them are doing it part time. Um, a lot of them have quit their jobs to work on it full time. Um, and I'll do a video sometime to show you guys how they do like time stamping and stuff online um, and how that gets all tracked. It's really cool. But um, uh, that's what that one's going to be about. Uh, from capital markets to supply chains, reimagining business networks with blockchain. So that one's really exciting to me. Um, and this is one where you're going to probably want to have your phone nearby. Um, I'm going to be uh, monitoring Twitter because I don't know how I'm going to get the information fast enough. I'm hoping that um, someone will stream it. Big props to Crypto for streaming the Ethereal Summit uh, live. I'm really hoping someone does this live. Um, it's going to be difficult, though. Um, you know, I'll be able to listen and watch to a lot of a lot of this before I have to go to work that day, but a lot of it will have to catch up um, afterwards. Um, so um, I'll be watching at lunch. I'll be trying to stay in the know because I'm going to want to uh, make sure I'm on top of any big announcement for you guys. But... Um, IBM Research, um, their director of hybrid, uh, hybrid cloud services, essentially, um, it's a senior vice president. It's pretty, pretty far up there. It's past a vice president. It's a senior vice president. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so they're going to be talking about um, the supply chain with blockchain technology, and if you work in e-commerce and in, in distribution. Um, you know, manufacturing, um, you play a role in supply chain. Uh, also, if you are a part of any delivery service, if a U UPS, FedEx, um, any type of shipping, right? Cargo, ports, just, just all of that, right? So, um, IBM is working really hard on some, on some services to help all those industries. Um, and they're really making a run at it. Um, I think it's really interesting um, that both IBM and Microsoft, some older school companies, right? Um, unless you're my age, you really don't appreciate e either of them as much as you probably should. But some old school companies um, getting back in the mix of like seriously cutting edge technology, um, getting their hands dirty. Um, but with that said, uh, companies more recently like um, uh, Google came out uh it just came out actually um i saw it today on reddit that google um somebody somebody was able to figure out or find out i haven't read the article yet i don't know if they publicly stated it but essentially um there's no um it's breaking news essentially today that google has invested in golem uh, golem is a supercomputer in the cloud if you haven't taken a look at Golem yet, I, I highly recommend you do. Um, it's a very long-term project. If they pull it off, I'll tell you the truth, guys. If they pull this off, it will change the world forever. That's how big of a deal it is. Like, it's not a joke. It's also a big task. It's uh, they're, they're climbing Mount Everest. Um, but what's cool about that is they uh, essentially have made it to base camp already. They literally um, have given out um, a test um, opportunity. I don't know really what to call it, but essentially there's these uh, 3D rendering files that they have, and they, they, they let you uh, send it in. They're Blender. If you're familiar with Blender, it's a, 
uh, 3D uh, rendering application. But anyhow, they took the blend. You can take your Blender files and send them into the cloud. Essentially, they process all the algorithms to render properly and then send you back the results. Okay, and that's pretty cool. Um, that's very relevant for me and my work. I have uh, graphic designers at work that um, I walk by them regularly and there's a nice little blue bar. Anyone anyone working with Adobe or anything can relate. Um, any graphic designers, any creative people, um, especially if you are an, into video, um, you deal with rendering. You deal with the fact that your employer will never give you the hardware that you require. I, I've never, guys, just get used to it. If you do, you are blessed. But I've worked so many places, and I've never been able to find an employer that gets it, that truly understands the uh, amount of time lost, um, the amount of frustration that they create and stress that, that they create, um, just because they wouldn't spend the extra, what, $1,000? You know, we're talking about professionals that they pay a lot more than that per year. This is a one-time cost kind of thing. It's like, just pay and get the people what they need and make it happen. Um, sorry, I'm a little passionate about that, if you can't tell. Um, I am I can't stand bottlenecks. I can't, uh, you know, I'm the kind of guy where I need like six screens to do my job um, to the best of my ability. Um, and maybe you're that way. If you've never worked with multiple screens, try it sometime. It'll set you free, and you'll and, and and then you know, I think everyone's had a crappy laptop at some time in their in their life or uh, something of that nature. So uh, imagine having to deal with a, a crappy laptop consistently, but you're pushing it to the max all the time. That's 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 all gonna go away. You know, Gollum is going to change the world um, because someone like me that has processing power got a ton of processing power sitting right next to me here and I'm gonna be able to empower someone in the world uh, that never had access to that kind of power before right like here I am complaining about how crappy the laptops are and stuff but you know there are people that don't even have access to that but because of the internet and because of cloud computing we're about to empower people in third world countries to go get an education online using the internet and then actually use that knowledge we're a world application in the cloud they are actually going to be able to produce value and contribute back and get paid for it so um, it's gonna it would absolutely send ripples through the world because um, I know that me I would I would begin uh, looking to outsource as much um, of, of the work as I can um, to give opportunities to these people um you know even more so not not you know i understand that like pushing jobs outside of america is always frowned upon and things like that but um you know i would want to pay the the a fair wage to those to the people you know like i can change someone's life drastically and uh, i don't you know i'm a big fan of america obviously because i live here but I also want to, you know, I don't, there's parts of the world that are still in poverty. I do not want to die and us not solve poverty. Like, what are we doing, guys? It's 2017, and there are parts of the world that are still stuck in the 1800s. It's just broken. So, you know, if we can at least get everyone into the 1900s, that'd be a, a big step forward. Um, so anyhow... Just a little bit about what I believe in, just just in case you're curious, and feel free to leave a comment. And I see both sides of the ar argument, but um, the 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 whole concept of decentralization and etc. is literally removing borders, right? Like if you're a big fan of this stuff, you're basically a fan of like like screw what country you're a part of. Like aren't I the same as the that person in that country? Like they're no different than me. We're all the same. We're all in this together. Um, more than ever as the world becomes uh, closer and closer and more connected. So anyhow, um, you know, people get so concerned about a single economy, like, oh, we got to keep jobs in a certain place because it's for the local economy. You know, that's all going to break soon. Like it's going to break in our lifetime. And part of it is the decentralization. Globalization has already done that. 
Um, we're like going into globalization 2.0. We're like moving forward into this new era. Um, and uh, people just need to, I guess, get used to it. I understand. I totally get like, you know, in order to support the ridiculous systems we have here in America, we need as many people working. Our systems aren't designed to um, deal with globalization very well because it's so crazy all the laws and the tax laws and things like that it's just it's just, it's just complicated um you know i don't want to like complain about it too much it's just it's a it's a challenge is what i would say um and there's opportunities to, to try to fix those but um anyhow moving on because we got a lot to go through sorry for that tangent guys i hope uh, i hope you learned something um, unlocking opportunities in blockchain through collaboration. So this is this one's going to be very interesting because we've got um, a few stakeholders. Um, we have the chief innovation officer from Citibank that's going to be there, um, and that's that's going to be interesting. You know, when when you've got legitimately big name brand um, brands on stage. Um, they're going to be talking about what they're working on. They're going to be talking about this stuff. Like, they're actively implementing blockchain. There is a huge rush, okay? Uh, right now, you guys are the, the first to arrive to the gold rush of cryptocurrency and blockchain, but the banks were here before you. The banks are actively working on it, employing people, trying to um, centralize it. Uh, there will be blockchain solutions that are centralized. Um it's a good thing the governments are uh, very slow um, because if the governments were, were over this stuff, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. Uh, but they're not there yet. They're going to have to play catch up. And because they're going to play catch up, they're going to have to play a little bit more of our game. And that's important. However, with the banks getting so involved, um, that, that that's just going to go back to the way that things have always been. So um, it's tough. You know, I had someone in my channel ask me to talk about Ripple a little bit more. Um, and I need to, and I've been kind of avoiding Ripple um, just in general because um, I do uh, understand the value and the concepts, etc., etc., etc. But I also know that there's a lot of opportunities um, through different uh, uh, blockchains. Um, I know that NIM is trying to compete, and NIM is, uh, you know, could actually end up being the winner in that space. Just because they really are working hard and they know what they're doing, um, and they're building a, a lightning fast platform on a platform that's much more, um, uh, how do I put this? It's easy to understand and learn if you're a programmer. Like you can pick it up quick. You don't have to learn a special language or anything. And um, anyhow. I need to talk about Ripple more with you guys and Stellar, Stellar Lumens and things like that. You guys have been wanting to know, and I know that's a lot of the reason a lot of people are getting into this right now. Like, that's your first experience. A lot of people get in are getting in right now, and they're like, oh, my gosh, look at that. Um, look at how much that's going up. You know, I own some Ripple at two cents, and, um, you know, so there's no complaints here. But um, that doesn't mean I, you know, I guess I guess for me, I'm still not, I don't have a lot of conviction around it. Uh, for the long term, I did. I did talk to my friend about it. I said, you know, what'd be funny is like here, you know, we we're all hyped up about Ethereum, but it, it makes me wonder if that's just like because they do, they were kind of the first ones out there, and like, you know, should we be looking at some of these other blockchains a little closer, etc. And I don't know. The more I do the homework, I just feel like Ripple is just, uh, um, it's tough. My belief system is this, guys. I have an extremely hard time believing that it's more valuable than Ethereum. I believe Ethereum will change the world. I feel like Ripple will lower costs for banks. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, they could save banks billions. Like, that's just straight up the truth. <laughs> but that doesn't change the world, does it? Is, is uh, giving banks a, a better margin going to change the world? Is it... Um, you know, what other applications does it have? So is Ripple cool? Yes, it could be a win, but that's up for you guys to, to decide. I'm not, I'm not any type of financial advisor. And at this point, 
um, I don't even care because, you know, I've made some money on it and, um, you know, whether it ends up um, at zero or ends up at, um, you know, $100 someday, that'd be, that's not going to happen. But um, I guess there could be mass inflation, then it could happen. But um, that's just where I'm at with it, guys. So I'm not going to, like, endorse it and also not going to be against it. I just think that it's to each his own. I do think that you should have some type of diversification, and one of them absolutely better be banking, because banking could win this game. The governments could partner with the banks and force those to win the game. You understand what I mean? They can start regulating the other blockchains and making it hard, etc., etc., um, just things to think about in the long term. Be diversified. Be safe. Be smart about it. Don't you know? Don't just put all your money in one place and assume that that's the future. Um, you know, does Ethereum fall apart if Vitalik dies tomorrow? I don't know. Possibly. I don't know. Anyhow. So after that, there's lunch, and then we got cross-border uh, payments. So we we're just get talking about Ripple. Um, looks like Swift will be there. They're out of uh, Canada. Um, they're just going to be talking about the transferring of funds across borders. Um, this is a huge deal. You guys have heard me talk about this. This is huge. Um, there was a, a woman talking at the Ethereal Summit yesterday, talking about um, in Africa, it's like um, you know, twelve to twelve percent on every single transaction to, to to be able to send money somewhere and. It's crazy. Like, can you imagine, like, every time you have to send money, you get a tax of, like, 12%. The banks are taking 12% just to send money from A to B? Guys, it's, that is, like, robbery. Like, like that's oppression. Like, I don't even know how that's allowed. Anyhow. Um, you know, my father was asking me recently. He's like, hey, I want to look into, you know cryptocurrency to get money to remote islands in the Philippines to help some churches um, uh, you know in the Pacific Rim essentially uh, where it's hard to get money to because the banks are taking 15% right so people are like donating money and giving money to good causes and then it's like you know did you I, did you ever think about that that when you like give money to like maybe the Red Cross to send to a third world country did you ever think about that 15% of it just goes to a bank it's it can you imagine that just makes me sick like there's is there really like banks sitting like there's someone at a bank sitting around waiting for the next natural disaster just so they can cash in on like all the money that moves to go help the billions of dollars donated that's disgusting that is wrong anyhow man i never thought about that that is sick um that's got to change guys cryptocurrency fixes that so man I'm excited about cross-border payments. I hope that uh, we can keep making strides in that direction. Be looking for investment opportunities for the for the uh, cryptocurrencies who are doing it well and making breakthroughs in that space. Uh, just keep your keep your eyes peeled on that. Um, I don't think any big news will come out of there, but um, just something to think about. Uh, can Bitcoin scale? So anyone new to, isn't aware. If you've been around for a while, you know. Bitcoin has scalability issues right now. If I wanted to send you money, it could take an hour um, through Bitcoin. That's not good for Bitcoin. It's not good at all. Um, transactions are just taking forever. So, and that's because of a scaling issue. Um, you know, scaling is even a concern with Ethereum in the long run. It really is, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm heavily um, invested in NEM right now is because uh, I trust you guys Ethereum is like almost my entire portfolio but I also have a lot of NIM that would be my number two and the reason is is because of the speed and scalability and also the ease of use right because um, I think that it won't be long before all of these blockchain opportunities are, are essentially laid out in front of IT people and they just pick and 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 they've never you know, it'll be like the first project they ever do. And they're like, I need to decide on behalf of my organization and my company, which one I use. Well, if they're smart. They do all the research. And if they're really, really, really smart and dig really, really deep, they're probably going to choose NIM. It's cost effective. Okay. 
However, if they're just simply looking for a simple application and it's not a long-term play, they're going to go with Ethereum because all of the dApps will be available and things like that and you can just plug and play. Um, so, I don't know. Just think about that. Um, consider those things. Uh, research. Do your research. Do your homework. Lots of homework on this stuff. Um, anyhow, scalability is a critical element um, to success for a blockchain, and they're going to be talking about that. I would love to sit in on that one. That one, that one fascinates me. Scalability is something I, I really enjoy. Um, so hopefully, crypto can choose that one because this one's at the same time as another one. That's the part that sucks. It's like I need crypto to be in two places at the same time. I'm going to ask him if he can fork himself. Let's see if we can make that happen. Maybe we can uh, crowdfund an ICO for crypto and get a clone. Building coalitions. Um, that one's not really too exciting, I won't lie. I'll just kind of skip that one. Um, trade finance and supply chain. Um, you kind of see a reoccurring theme here, guys. Uh, the banks. The banks, the banks, the banks. The majority of the people here that are showing up, the majority of the people talking are banks, 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 banks. They are trying to get ahead of this. They want to beat the rest of us to it um, and centralize the technology if possible. So, um, anyhow, uh, chasing privacy and blockchains. Now, this is really cool as um, we've got some members from Zcash that will be on the stream, uh, be up there. We also have someone from the U.S. Treasury. That one's going to be a fascinating one. Um, you know, there's some technologies you guys should look into. Um, you know, when we talk about privacy, it's a little a gray area. And the reason why it's gray is because um, that's kind of like black market, right? Uh, you want to do a transaction, you don't want anyone to know about it. There are currencies with that, um, you know, they fulfill that need. Um, people, people actually have a negative connotation about Bitcoin. I want to touch on this real quick for some of you new people. Bitcoin is a blockchain where every single transaction record is kept forever. The FBI here in America have, have literally put people in jail thanks to Bitcoin. Like, because they're able to track it back on, track the transactions back, right? So, but there are new uh, blockchain technologies where you can do transactions and then you'll never be able to be traced. So it's tough. I, I don't like I don't like me investing in in those kind of things, um, but I am investing in those kind of things. Part of the reason is is that there is a very very deep need for personal private transactions. Um, I would really really like my um, healthcare records to be um, stored on a blockchain. Um, and me be able to transfer it from doctors to physicians, you know, different, you know, move it around and no one actually know that it's me. You know, there is, there is some good. And you, think about all the things you don't want people to know. Um, I think another good example is like, you don't really, no one really talks about their finances. No one talks about how much they have in savings or how much they're investing um, you know, I'm not going to talk about on my channel how much I have invested, etc. Um, but those records are stored somewhere, right? It's, you want those things to be private. You want to keep them secret and keep them safe. Um, so privacy is a critical, critical element um, for a lot of exciting applications. So... There's pros and cons to, to these technologies, especially in the privacy space. And it's really, really hard to judge these coins right now, guys. All right? Um, 
it'll be interesting if you know governments start outlawing the use of these things and then like how can they actually outlaw it how would they know you know it gets kind of messy um so anyhow that's fascinating to me i would love to sit in on that one um and see what they have to say especially that uh woman from the u.s treasury i'd love to see what they have to say um oh this is fantastic so i'm just looking i'm just passing lunch now and they're doing going to be do a blockchain luncheon for women that's fantastic you know uh that's a, been a great topic at ethereal summit um they had an entire panel of uh leaders um who are women and um fantastic fantastic i am all for um getting some more women in this space um in fact the demographics on on my youtube channel is like disturbingly male like way way too high um i think that women bring a perspective that we can't as men um into all business and i'm really passionate about that um and i'm really passionate about empowering women um across the world there's a lot of places in the world where they're oppressed like extremely oppressed um they're they're treated like uh products or assets um and it's wrong so anyhow um blockchain and global issues technical challenges in blockchain consensus mechanisms and smart contract verifications so uh the cto of ripple is actually going to be speaking on uh, the consensus mechanisms and uh, smart contract verification so that's pretty cool um i don't know if he's not really going to break any news um what i do know is that guy is worth a lot of money more than he was two weeks ago <laughs> i wonder if he'll show up if i was worth that much i might not show up just kidding um yeah, so let's see. Building a foundation for decentralized identity. Cool. That's cool. We, you know, that kind of goes back to the privacy thing. You know, um, how do we uh, decentralize identity and things like that? Um, new regulatory challenges for blockchain. This keeps coming up a lot. The Ethereal Summit over and over and over again. It was like hey, all you really rich people, really smart people um, that made a bunch of money uh, in this space in the last two years, please go hire all the attorneys you can. <laughs> Pretty much, that's the message. Um, the government is coming. And um, governments don't understand things at, very well. They also don't employ people. Uh, the best so it's going to be difficult for them to make good uh, decisions they're going to typically lean for decisions that they believe is best for them in the industry with them being with their side of the story being extremely clear and our side being about as blurry as it can get okay and it's not i don't like to talk about it because it's not supposed to be like a scary thing um the future of this is that the governments do get involved and we have great success together working together it's just going to take time and so we're going to run into frustration along the way guys very real frustrations um and essentially a lot of the icos and um concepts that are out there some of them might you know get shut down in a in a way in that you know they start getting outlawed in different parts of the world and just because of uh ignorance really on what the technology is trying to uh, really accomplish um just something to think about um we've got iot and blockchain empowering the connected device economy so this is about the Internet of Things. I won't get into that on this. If you want to learn about the Internet of Things, there's some great um, YouTube videos that help you understand what that is. Um, 
also uh, legality and structure of ICOs. Fantastic. Sign me up. Guys, there's a bunch of ICOs out there right now, and you probably have been a part of some, and there's no legality behind it. Like, none. Um, essentially, what's going to happen is, like, one of these ICOs is going to fail, and investors are going to lose all their money, and then, you know, the governments are going to get really upset because, you know, in the past, you're supposed to be an accredited investor, all right? Now, the laws did change recently here in America, but I don't know about the rest of the world. I also don't even know how it works. Like, um, you know, we're investing in ICOs where, where is their headquarters? Oh, wait, the company is decentralized. They have none. They aren't located in a single location. <laughs> this is like, I, you know, um, that's something that we've all got to figure out and try to get ahead of. Because, you know, the last thing you want is to find out that um, in, you know, you're breaking some serious laws or something like that. Uh, no one wants to be a part of that. But um, just something that's really interesting and something that you guys are going to hear come up over and over again. Not just not just in the short term. We're we're on a, we're going to be dealing with these kind of things over the next uh, two decades, three decades. We're still dealing with like internet law, aren't we? Right. So, just keep that in mind. Um. Next, we got Fat Protocol Investing, a fireside chat. Um, basically, investing in networks is a thesis. Huh. That's way over my head, guys. I won't lie on that one. Par huh. I read this earlier, and I thought I understood it, but I don't. Um, taking Blockchain Live. Reimagining traded finance. Again, more bank stuff. I don't know. How, I mean, it's just over and over again. And then um, the keynote presentation at the end of the day is going to be the state of blockchain. Um, we've got some guys from Con Consensus, not the, the company. The CEO will be there. The CEO of Blockstream will be there. Uh, the executive director of Hyperledger will be there. Um, anyhow, they're going to be uh, just discussing um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, to be precise. So you may hear some uh, news break out of that, and uh, that's how the day would uh, wrap up. So that's one day. That's one day, guys. One day. Let's go to Tuesday. Um... Special announcement. R3. The new operating system for financial services. R3 is moving distributed ledger technology off the drawing board and into the financial markets. Launched in September 2015 with nine bank members, R3 now has over 80 members. So, the what, 80 banks or 80 members? I don't know. Um... It's a platform built from the ground up to meet the specific needs of the industry. And uh, so they're going to be kind of like unveiling this, apparently. It's interesting. Uh, you might There might be some big news out of that. Excuse me while I take a drink, my, uh, my throat. Getting a little dry. Plus I need that caffeine, boys. All right. Blockstack, building a new decentralized internet. Blockstack is a new decentralized internet where you own your data and your apps run locally without remote servers. So this is a really neat concept. I was learning a lot about this last night actually as I was really deep diving some of uh, these technologies that are being built out to be offered on Microsoft Azure platform and essentially there's this concept where your data about yourself is valuable, right? Uh, the basic attention token believes that your attention is valuable, right? But what's more valuable is probably your data. Um, and um, I read an article recently that, that basically said that data is now worth more than like oil in the world economy, like the value of it. Um, that is, and what's crazy is, is like, you got to understand that people are profiting off of your data. 
what they know about you and um you ain't you ain't getting anything good out of it um so there's these concepts out there where you you deserve to own your data it's your data and you should be paid for your data and that's pretty cool concepts um it feels a little too science fiction you know um i don't want to say that that kind of thing won't happen i'm not going to be predict things but you know uh it could take a, a long time i think what's cool is the technology exists to do it right now however you've got a lot of people making a lot of money that you're gonna have to go up against so it's gonna take a long time for something like that to get adopted and supported um it's interesting Building a new decentralized internet. That's exciting. I was thinking about this when I was driving uh, this morning. Uh, and I was just like, man, how funny is it if it's like in like five years, instead of saying like, I'm going to hop on the internet. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I don't know how we would say it, but I'm going to get on the Ethereum. Is that, was that what I say? I don't know. Or, um, it'll be interesting. I don't know what it's going to look like. Do you say, I'm going to hop on the blockchain? That doesn't sound good. I wonder how weird the internet sounded back in the early 90s. I was quite young at the time. I wonder I wonder what it was like. Um, my father has some good stories about how he used to try to tell people about the internet. And how he got to tell them for the first time. I'm just... I'm fascinated by that you know now it's now now it's just a normal word um, I wonder uh, what the word will be for our web 3.0 or maybe it'll just be so seamless and integrated we still just call it the internet uh, you know everyone's calling it internet 3.0 or whatever so I don't know um, then the new digital gold standard with the CME group and the Royal Mint. Okay, this one's really cool, guys, because essentially Bitcoin's been called the digital gold for a long time. Um, however, there's an you know there's an opportunity to create a blockchain-based platform for gold trading. Now, this is really important. Um, because there are, I've, um, I've invested in gold and silver, um, been doing so since I was in college. I had a mentor teach me a lot about gold and silver and, um, it's also just kind of fun hobby as well, but, um, I'm not like super bullish on gold and silver, um, only because, uh, you know, we're, 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 times are just so different. And where we, what we consider value, as a society, has changed so much. It's it's uh, it's getting harder and harder for me to you know look at a hard asset and say that it's, it has a more value. Uh, you know, uh, we live in a day and age where we're really starting to understand that value is like creating more something that can actually create more of something. So anyhow. All that being said, in the gold and silver investment community, for years and years and years, there's been serious concerns about silver and gold being sold, uh, basically via paper, right? So uh, gold and silver is stored in a vault and a you know, essentially like a, the equivalent of like a bank is going to say, hey, we have this in a vault. I'll sell it to you. I'll sell you this gold and keep it here. Um, there is a lot of people, the majority of people in that community believe strongly that gold and silver sales um, are, uh, they're not real. Essentially that they are uh, selling more than what they have in their vault. Um, I don't know if that's true, but the world does desperately need to put 
silver and gold hard assets on a blockchain and these assets need to be serialized um, we have the no one in the world really knows how much gold and silver we have no one knows we keep digging it out of the ground though that's all I know we will keep buying it silver has a, a, a actual use um, an application for technology it's used in a lot of computer screens and in computers um, so I'm, I'm a little bit more of a fan of silver in that um, I think we're just <laughs> uh, you know 20 years from now we'll look back and be like wow how do we live with only like you know 15 devices in our house I, th I think that's what I'm up to guys I don't know but last time I had to I just recently flipped over to a new router, and it's like, I have so many devices in this house. Um, it's disturbing. It's a good word to use. <laughs> oh, man. Gone are the days of one PC for the whole family plugged into the phone jack. Those were good times. Bitcoin beyond $20 billion. Uh, Bitcoin's currency is in, in the future. Um... It's a, it's crazy what Bitcoin is worth, guys. Let me bring it up um, while I'm talking about it. I want to check the, um, the uh, capitalization. I'm, we're about to cross seventy billion. Last I checked, and we just did. There it is. Congratulations, guys. That's seventy billion in market cap. Um, not only that, and I want to congratulate everyone because. Uh, right now, within the last few minutes, we have we have actually broken through. It appears we've broken through the 2,000 mark, and even Ethereum broke the 130 mark. So Bitcoin is breaking 2,000. That is historic. That is history in the making. Um, and Ethereum is busting through as well right now. Um, and that's fantastic. Uh, I just want to um, congratulate everyone. Um, I wonder if that is inflated. Um, okay, so I'm now I'm on the GDAX. Without a doubt, without a doubt, uh, Bitcoin has blasted through 2,000. It is at 2,018 on GDAX. That is not inflated because of the U.S. tether. This is actual U.S. dollars. That is awesome. That's like literally breaking news. Uh, that happened while I'm recording this video. Absolutely. Um, congratulations, guys. Uh, by the time you get this, it will be old news in this world. But good job. Wow. I stayed up way too late thinking we were going to break it, and I wanted to bring it live. Man, just now happened. This is unreal, guys. I hope you guys understand what you're, you're a part of here. This is exciting. Um, Ethereum... Still technically hasn't broken. I apologize. That 130 must have been inflated. That's what I don't like about the coin market cap. It's a little inflated um, because of where it's getting its sources from, from all the different markets. And the markets send their money, uh, send their data based on either US tether or actual US dollar. However, that being said, Ethereum is touching all time high right now. I'm watching it live. We are in front of the wall to hit a new all-time high. Um, I'm going to back this up and make sure. Um, not quite. Not quite all-time high. Uh, but we're making a run. Um, it looks really, really good. So just a quick update on that wireless. And then Ethereum is looking really good right now. The consolidation is strong. We had a really strong shakeout last night. Um, bringing us down to lower 20s. And now it uh, looks like we're pushing up towards 130. I think that once uh, news breaks um, on Bitcoin getting through 2000, uh, I think Ethereum will be next to push through um, and have its next run um, because Bitcoin just had uh, that was a, just just within the last few minutes right here on this video. Just breaking through 2000. Sorry to get off track, guys. I just I saw that when I busted open market cap. Super excited. Anyhow, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a currency. It is insane. It's been eight years. 
it took eight years for it to get to this price, uh, and today's the day we did it. Um, congratulations to everyone who's been on that ride for a long time. Um, I hope you guys um, have a little bit, a little bit of Bitcoin, and are celebrating. So, anyhow, everything is up today as well. I am looking at the top. Uh, let's take a look here. Out of the top 20 in market capitalization right now, all of them are green, except one. That's insane. On a Saturday, guys, markets aren't even open. I don't even know anymore. Bitcoin dominance is down to almost an all-time low, 47.1. Um... It's exciting all right guys sorry man i just have i just have to talk about it when i when i when it happens like that i'm sorry i know this video ne needs to get back on track and your guys's time is valuable so we're gonna get back to it but congratulations to everyone um in bitcoin for breaking through that wall 2000 that's big news it's a big deal guys you guys are gonna get a lot of press coverage and things like that it's gonna it's healthy um we need, it's going to be good. It's going to help stabilize a lot of these gains because we're going to bring in some new investors, some new interest. Um, we, we do need to be careful. Should be some pullback soon, but um, maybe not. I don't know what we target. I don't know what the target is anymore for Bitcoin, guys. I have homework to do to try to figure out where that's going. But anyhow, so there's a talk about it. They'll be talking about how we just broke 2,000 here, which is pretty cool. But essentially, we've got um, uh, a talk specifically about where Bitcoin is headed. And that's, again, I'm fascinated by that just because of their scalability issues right now. It'll be interesting to see if they talk about SegWit at all. Bits and blockers, reflections from our journey. So this is Fidelity Investments. Um, they That's a big... That's a big deal. Fidelity, you guys. Um, they've been exploring Bitcoin and blockchain technology for quite a while in R&D. So there could be a very big announcement here. They could announce that they're doing a partnership. Um, you know, the, I guess the part that's concerning to me is that it's only 20 minutes long. Like the guy is going to get up there and say something and get off the stage. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm hoping he just gets up there and is like, hey, here's our new thing we're doing with this platform. You know, uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, keep your eyes peeled on that one. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday. Oh, no, not Sunday. Man, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Why did it? Sorry, guys. Next. Blockchain-based insurance. Super stoked about this. Super stoked. I talked in a recent video about how, um, you know, you, you pay for insurance on the title of your house because no one actually knows if you own your house. I bought a house, and I have no idea if it's actually mine. It's so messed up, so I have to pay insurance. It really... I've never had to man i've never felt like i was being scammed like that in my life like it's like like big level conspiracy scam kind of thing it just feels that way i i know it i know it happens to people so i get it but like how often does it happen is it enough that i really need to pay for it i mean i guess i'm super screwed if i don't right so super screwed anyhow but beyond that, you know, there's the concept of anonymous cars, right? So, you know, they've got Tesla's been working on it, right? And Tesla's thinking about making anonymous cars. The idea being is you and I never need to buy a car again. You know, the belief is that I've heard people say five years from now. I think that's crazy. But let's say 20 years from now, why would you ever buy a car? Um, what if there were just cars all over the place, all, just everywhere? And all these cars, you just walk up to one, get in it, and drive it. Um, essentially because of uh, your identity, uh, being on the blockchain, um, et cetera, et cetera. You could walk up to the car. It would know it was you and let you in and let you drive it. And the thing is, is that you would only pay for the use of the car 
however far you go you would only pay for insurance for that duration right uh, you guys pay insurance every month etc etc but shouldn't you only pay insurance for the time you're actually using the car um, if a car is sitting in your garage and not being used right you're not driving it why pay insurance so um, yeah I'm a huge fan of block based insurance I hope it completely revolutionizes the insurance industry I hope it gets rid of the middlemen um, I I can honestly say I, I'm sorry if you work at one but I pretty much hate the whole, whole entire industry it's completely broken it's uh, pretty uh, even the business models uh, don't make sense it's not right um, insurance people are incentivized in the wrong ways uh, the consumer is ripped off the the premiums just go up and up and up um, and then when something actually happens um, you know I don't think I've ever heard anyone have a really strong uh, positive experience with an insurance company when something actually happens um, the other thing is is like uh, even just even just lack of uh, and this goes down to the individuals unfortunately if you're in insurance listen up because you know it's like um, insurance people just don't do a good job of making it clear what they're really offering you right it wasn't until recently I realized uh, I dug into my insurance policy and there were so many things that I thought would be in there because it's common sense that I should have these things. Like, I should have, you know, I own a home now. I'm sure there's something to cover if I get robbed, right? No. Basically, I get a $300 check even if they were to wipe out everything. Like, that's it. $300? Are you, are you kidding me for what I pay? How come he never made, how come he didn't offer me a better plan or make it clear? Like, that's like a no-brainer. I don't know anyone that wouldn't want a better policy than that. Like, you just got to ask for the sale. Insurance people just don't get it. They don't understand. Um, all they care about is if they get you on the books, you're going to pay every month. They get their commission, and the, the person above them gets their commission, etc. So, it's just broken, and I think blockchain technology could completely wreck that entire industry. It'll get rid of all those middlemen. Um and uh bring the costs down um I'm, I'm looking forward to decentralizing insurance where i'm paying into a decentralized smart contract essentially you know and because of that my insurance is significantly less because no one is profiting off of it i am insuring someone else and they are insuring me and together we insure each other it's like utopia sounding a little bit but what's kind of cool is that it does exist as a technology. We can do these things. So blockchain-based insurance is something that fascinates me. And there still hasn't been a, a coin or an ICO um, that I've ran across that um, is, you know, really trying to a attack it. Um, if you are aware of one, please share it with me. Uh, I'd be excited to learn about it. Investor panel and proof of work competition. Um, this is pretty cool. It's basically um, ten thousand bucks for the person who gives the best uh, pitch. They're trying to help people learn how to give good pitches to get get you know funded. Um, although right now it's like, just have an ICO. You'll be a multimillionaire and be funded for the next uh, forevers. Do your homework when you do your ICOs, guys. There are sketchy ones, a lot sketchy one digital currency is an emerging asset class that one's fascinating to me um, I hate it when we start calling it an asset class just because I feel like we're handing it to the government when we call it that like oh yeah hey government here's an asset class you need to like regulate and put laws around and include and now there's good and bad to that one is all the regulation and laws might be bad I'm not gonna assume they're bad they might be bad um, the good news is, is once that stuff is like legit, that's when we get the big banks putting their money in. That's when blockchain is um, actually will start becoming a bubble. We're still not there um, until uh, big banks are investing. There's no bubble here, guys. Um, energy markets. Uh, you know that that one's interesting to me. I don't I don't work in that field. 
not even close. Um, however, I did grow up in a town with a large steam plant and know a lot of people that work in the steam plant. But that's that's it for me as far as energy markets go. But my understanding is is that it's really really hard to track the the buying and selling of energy and, and uh, essentially trying to figure out where it's going. And uh, the idea is that a blockchain could actually track every single transaction so that by the time it actually ends up getting used, um, you know, the, the originator of where the energy came from, like the steam plant in my town, would actually be able to go in and look and look backwards and actually see all the different places the energy went and where it finally ended up. Um... I guess the concept there is that we can lower the cost of energy, right? Because every transaction, every middleman can get removed. And uh, they could then direct the energy straight to where it actually belongs and be more efficient. And hopefully our energy costs come down. And um, basically anytime energy moves from point A to point B, uh, there's always, you know, some loss of energy too. So maybe it, maybe it's just more efficient, better for the world for your uh, environment and things so um, what else we got policies and procedures in healthcare blockchain implementations I talk about this one on my channel a lot um, my wife works at um, the largest hospital in the area um, and uh, yeah this is a very very real even uh, she she's even taught me a little bit about it um, about how it would help fix a lot of things. Um, I'm real passionate about it <clears throat> because I believe that if we can successfully get our health records onto the blockchain, um, I then can switch doctors anytime I want. If I have a you know a life-threatening situation and I'm in a different country, I can still get help. I can get the best help available. I can um, by informing the physicians of my, all of my historic records um, from every visit since I've been born. Um, that'd be cool, right? That will never be for me. That will never exist for us. But, um, you know, there there may be... Uh, my grandchildren might uh, be on the blockchain. Like, they might literally have all their health records. It's also a little bit scary, right? Um, I can see that kind of becoming a little bit, um, oh, I don't know. I just, I just don't like the idea of my grandchildren kind of becoming a number in a computer system and, you know, that could, governments could start doing that and I'm not a fan of that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just a personal thing, but I think that healthcare could be in a real better spot. Um, than it is now. There's way too many middlemen. Um, it's way too complex, and uh, there's way too much paperwork. Uh, you know, the I've I've heard it said that the average physician will do um, eighty percent of his time is doing paperwork, not actually helping people. Think about it. Um, blockchain could reverse that, and by giving qualified physicians. 80% more, or essentially, yeah, giving them a hundred, giving them the ability to do a hundred percent of their time to help people. All of a sudden, you just increase the supply of help. Increase the supply, the cost comes down. So, healthcare around the world is never going to be solved. It just won't. We have to be real about it. But reducing the cost, applying some economic principles, it's simply supply and demand. And it's so expensive because literally every single person on the planet demands it. Okay. We all need it at some point. And uh, because of all the laws and regulations and complexities of. Uh, privacy and etc that exist it's so convoluted that people go to school for eight years to be a doctor and then they spend so much time doing paperwork they never actually end up saving any lives 
or making a difference. Uh, we can set these people free, the, the best and the brightest in the world, the people who are passionate about helping other people. Uh, we can set them free to do it full time using blockchain technology. Uh, it can happen. It's a real thing. I'm passionate about that one. Beyond speculation, who actually uses blockchain? Or Bitcoin. Who actually uses Bitcoin? Sorry. Who is actually using Bitcoin? In the past, that answer may have been dominated by a discussion about speculation and gray market activity. That's still the case today, guys. I do not talk about Bitcoin. I do not talk about cryptocurrency when I'm talking to someone for the first time. I always bring it back to real world applications, real problem solution based. Real aha, that makes sense moments, not I don't get it. It's it's a digital currency. I thought, you know, what's this Silk Road thing? You know, negative connotations around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So I try to focus really, really hard on the Ethereum side, on, you know, on, on NEM, on real blockchain solutions designed for businesses. Because um, <clears throat> that makes sense to people. Saving money makes sense. Um, doing things better and faster makes sense. Um, creating more value makes sense. Bitcoin does nothing. It is I send it to you and you can send it back. And uh, however, these other blockchains, we can still do that. However, I can then take the dollar you send me and go purchase um, some gas uh, for my car and then go to work and make more money and now I have more money to transact with and maybe buy more gas and go do maybe even get a you know etc etc that's kind of the uh, story that I like to tell but anyhow monetizing content and data again I talked about data earlier content I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'm really frustrated by it. I'm, I'm trying to find an ICO that's actually trying to monetize content properly. And what I mean by that is like um, some type of uh, ability to take your actual creative assets and put them on the blockchain um, forever and have a key to unlock it and you know, essentially indefinitely protecting the content that you create. So graphic designer make something really cool um and uh you know in today's day and age it's going to get stolen and reused a thousand times um and they're they're only going to get a piece of what they deserve uh hopefully blockchain can fix that and make sure that these people are getting uh paid what they should be and they're not being taken advantage of i work with a lot of uh graphic designers and some of them deserve more in life uh, for how much uh, value they create and the potential that that they uh, actually have um, can be um, reached, the full potential can be reached if they were if there were systems out there to help them better control the content and uh, monetize it properly. So that one's fascinating to me and hits a little closer to home um, for me. And what I do, what's really interesting is that the CEO of Brave, um, again, basic attention token, is going to be based off the Brave browser platform. The CEO of that is there. I did a four-part series um, on that. At the end of the video, I'll make sure to put the video up so that you can click on it and go watch it. But I do I deep dive uh, basic attention token for you guys in, in, in four videos. Make sure you, you watch that. But um, he's going to be on stage, and this could be a big deal. There could, you know, he might finally release some um, important information. Um, what's really interesting is uh, um, I'm going to have to look this person up. It looks like 21. Uh, the clothing store will be there. Um, so that's a really interesting connection. Um, so I don't know what they're going to talk about. Um, in regards to content and data in the retail space, but I know that there's a lot of data in the retail space, um, and I, I, that, that's going to be interesting. So that one is going to be at 310, and so uh, I definitely will be watching my phone. Um, hopefully I can watch that live.
engaging with central banks on cryptocurrencies. So this one um, definitely it's way over my head, but at the same time, we all know who the central banks are. Um, the lineup of people talking is extremely impressive. Uh, we've got um, people, uh, the digital currency initiative at MIT, you got someone representing that. Um, we've got the Barbados Central Bank, a Deschutes Bank. Um, we got some. We've got some really important people here, and they're going to be talking about how the uh, central banks are the gatekeepers of the traditional finance world, and that's true. Um, but you know what's interesting is Ethereum is a good example of we've blasted those gates away. Um, a lot of you are considering ICOs, and some of you are already invested in those. You guys have to understand that that you would never have had that opportunity. Unreal opportunities right now that for way too long, uh, government has gotten in the way of. Government is too slow, and they aren't innovative enough um, to move quickly with their funds to help fund innovation. And Ethereum has broken that cycle. That's how come everything that's happening feels like it's happening so fast. Um, and it's because uh, people are getting their ideas and projects funded really quickly. And uh, these people are able to get to work fast um, on, on their ideas uh, because of that. Um, you know, they don't have to go around to all the VCs and um, give their pitches and, you know, um, you know, have to pull money out of their own pocket to fly to Istanbul and give a presentation and hope that it, you know, they'll they'll fund their project, things like that. All gone, um, and uh, we've removed the central uh, the centralization of investing in startups. Um, it is now available to the everyday man. Now I don't know how long that will last. I do not know, but my personal belief is I don't want to miss out. I don't want to have any regret that I didn't take advantage of the opportunity because it may come back uh, and haunt us a little bit as far as if you don't do something, you may not be able to. When the government gets involved, they may say that you can't and that you're not accredited. What do they know? You know, like... We understand this space better than they ever will. I think I'm I think I'm a pretty good steward of my money. I think I know when I can afford to give someone an ether. Like it's none of your business what you think. Like an accredited investor, like we don't need that. Uh you know, too much opportunity is hidden and not accessible to the everyday man. Um and that's gotta stop. Um, it's just it's it's just silly. Um, with that said, uh, I know that the concept accredited they like to use that word because it's like you know makes you sound smart. Um, I think I think it is important that you are smart about your investing though. So just make sure you guys do your homework. Uh, don't just be throwing money at every ICO. That would be not smart. That's more likely to get the regulators here quicker is uh, when people are just throwing their money at things and they're not doing their homework properly. They're not really evaluating if this really truly adds value and will be worth more um, uh, at, at a later date. A lot of these roadmaps are a joke. Many of the roadmaps don't have a real business plan. I like roadmaps that say ROI in it. And that doesn't say that directly, but return on investment, you know, um, I should be able to read a roadmap and when I'm done, very clearly, very clearly, understand how my net worth um, will go up, if that makes sense. So, anyhow guys, that uh, is almost it. We're coming into the final stretch. Falling behind in the United States, fostering blockchain innovation and sending it overseas. 
So um, the United States has complicated regulatory environment with a patchwork of regulators. Where does blockchain technology fit into the federal regulatory regime and regime? Sorry. And is the United States doing a good job of fostering innovation? I'm going to say no, the United States is not doing a good job of fostering innovation. But we are a leader in innovation. But fostering is a different word. Fostering is, um, you know, really coming in and helping us succeed. Where's the help? We're a $70 billion market right now. Where's the help? Who's fostering us? Who from the government is here to, like, help us succeed? The thing that's most likely to happen is someone's going to come in here and, like, try to slow it down. Hey, this is too fast. Hmm. We don't want that, guys. Driving an open ecosystem for mobility. This one is exciting, and this one you're going to want to be on your phones. This, guys, this is potentially the big announcement of the weekend. This could be the big one, and I don't... And that's not a prediction or anything. It could come from anywhere. But this is why I say it. The uh, CFO and head of mobility services at Toyota Research Institute. So essentially, Toyota, the research division, is going to be here talking about open mobility in, uh, initiative. And Toyota is working hard on the ecosystem right now. Sorry is working on an ecosystem right now. And that's really vague. I have a feeling after this panel, we'll understand what their blockchain ecosystem is. We'll know which blockchain they're using. Think about it. We know it's not Bitcoin. It's too slow to do anything that's business applicable. Is it Ethereum? Maybe. Is it NEM? maybe it's not ripple <laughs> not stellar or lumens i think if you go and you do your homework guys you'll realize okay like there's only these core real um blockchains that are really helping businesses um it's going to be exciting to hear potentially here potentially only potentially you know i know that these big companies don't always just break things to everyone but um the fact that toyota is doing this excites me um and they're and they're here to talk about it they're here to actually talk about it not just get in front of everyone so yeah we're working on this thing no they're here to talk about it in detail so i'm excited about that one that one is at 4:35. so at 4:30, make sure you guys are uh, on you know checking out twitter uh checking out the hashtags it's probably going to be consensus 2017 is the hashtag or maybe something shorter like consent 2017 uh you'll find it just make sure you search in twitter um you'll find that for sure there's another announcement um they kind of save the best for last big announcements here we've got net key um, so there's going to be a big, uh, announcement there. Um, and I'm assuming that it has, it's banking related. In fact, I know it's going to be banking related because the general manager of economic policy for the central bank of Aruba is going to be on stage with them. So they're going to be talking about, uh, their goals, challenges, and opportunities to use blockchain technology. Um, and that's kind of exciting. So there you have a central bank that is um, going to be using blockchain. Like it's not something they're just talking about. They wouldn't be invited to talk about it if they weren't really working on this stuff. So it's really exciting. It will be a good one. Um, I think there's some good insight there on um, the banking side of things. Uh, there's an announcement by Abra. Abra announcement. I love Abra. That's one of one of my favorite Pokemon. Sorry. Um, when people discuss blockchain-based remittance services, Abra is usually the first company that comes to mind. 
So they have a big announcement. I don't know what it is, but it's literally just announcement. And they got 15 minutes. Think about that. Like this is this is getting juicy. They're going to get up there and they're going to be like, "Hey guys, this is exciting. This is our new partner or this is our new technology or this is etc cetera, etc." Cetera. Uh, it could it could be with anyone and come from anywhere, uh, but something to keep keep an eye out for if you want to research this company. It's spelled A B R A. Um, maybe you'll find some hints if you do some digging on what that could be. Let me know if you uh, have any insider information. Anyhow, <laughs> can I can I say that or request that legally? I don't even know. Um, I won't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> Um, then they're going to have some closing remarks and um, announce the winners to the different competitions. Um, and then um, then there's going to be a closing statement by uh, the CEO of Coinbase. And essentially, they have this new... Uh, browser, this mobile browser for Ethereum apps. It's called Token. If I'm if I'm understanding it correctly, um, it's gonna have like a built-in messenger, and it's gonna be an Ethereum wallet. So I don't know if everyone's living under a rock, but I don't know how there haven't been any articles about this. I haven't seen it on Reddit. When I read it for the first time, I was like, what? Clearly, someone's not doing a good job with the PR or the marketing. I'm sure if uh, there's tons of information out there on it. But they're doing, they're basically introducing it to the world here to close out the show. And Coinbase is going to be showing off a mobile Ethereum DAP browser. That, that, no, that alone, guys huge huge but it's gonna have a built-in messenger all right that's exciting does that mean uh we can chat in our in, in inside this app inside the browser that'd be sweet but it's an ethereum wallet as well a mobile ethereum wallet from Coinbase, a leader. We all know that they are the leader in the space. Um, super, super excited about that. I get the feeling like it's right here in writing what they're doing, but I get the feeling that like to most people that aren't in the aren't doing their homework or doing their research, they're gonna they're gonna be surprised and oh my gosh and i need to buy more ethereum <laughs> could that could this could there be a pump from this yes absolutely absolutely because um what if it's available immediately after the show think about it i don't know we'll see how cool would that be that next week I have an Ethereum DAP on my phone. I now can share with people what a DAP is and how it works um, on my phone everywhere I go. That's, that gives us, uh, as the community, more opportunities than ever before. Right now, it's like I gotta sit down on my computer and I gotta install Mist and yeah. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Closing reception. So one of the big reveals that's already been announced too is that there's going to be an Ethereum operating system. I don't know what that really means, but um, they're going to be talking a lot about that as well. It's supposed to be a re real big deal. There was a tweet the other day about it. I covered it on this channel. And uh, essentially, here it is. We're going to have an Ethereum operating system. What it looks like, how it works, I do not know. But um, that's really exciting. You know, um, a long time ago, we didn't have Windows, guys. We didn't have an operating system. Um, 
I'm pretty excited to learn about it. Um, I can't wait to hear some of the best uh, thought leaders and um, the best minds in this industry talk about the operating system and what it really means and how much it's going to help developers um, and even help us as users. Who knows? I know that there's been a lot of work on um, the Ethereum side. The, literally, the Ethereum team, Vitalik and his team, have been working on a user-friendly contract creation tool for you and me to use. I'm not kidding, guys. Like we, you know, right now it's like you got to go learn Solidity and all this stuff to like try to make a contract, and then like you better make sure your contract's built right or you're screwed. Like you are screwed, right? Like the DAO. Look at the, what happened with the DAO. But you better know what you're putting out there, right? Well, good news is is that there will be a tool that builds one. And then we'll be able to take that contract and throw it on GitHub and say, hey, everyone, is there something wrong with this? And the community will check it out for you, make sure your contract looks good, and you're good to go. And you can release it into the wild to exist for all eternity on the blockchain. Um, that's pretty amazing. Guys... Every single one of you uh, listening to this right now, you're like you're gonna be able to create your own contract, whether you understand how to um, do any coding at all or even can speak any of this language at all, right? So, how cool is that? So I don't know if that's what this is, but I know for sure that they're working on that. They are actively working on it. It's been part of their roadmap. They're trying to get that going. It's something that they want to release soon before Ethereum is complete. Um, so be on the lookout for that because that's like game changer. Big time. So there you have it, guys. Consensus 2017. It's going to be awesome. I wish I could be there. Our main man, Crypto, will be there bringing us the best news. Make sure you follow his channel. He's my hero. Um, uh, awesome work, uh, crypto doing the streams. Really appreciate you, man. Um, really inspiring me and helping me. So thank you for that. Um, so there you have it, guys. I hope you liked this. Um, you know, this isn't something we do often because there's not really a, a lot of big events. But I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did like it, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you go to Steam it and follow me and give me a, a, a like on my videos. That's awesome. Um, sorry for the fire engine going by right now, guys. Uh, if it gets a little too loud here, we'll let it pass. But if you want to support me without giving me money, that's cool. Uh, you know, you can go to Steam it and you just give me upvotes and uh, that supports me. Like, they'll give it. They'll, they'll give me the money. So don't worry about it. Uh, uh, Steam, it's awesome, guys. If you're not signed up, get on there. You get rewarded for using it. Um, thank you so much again to the people who are using the links below. Uh, all you're doing is inspiring me. Um, every, every dime is going back into the ecosystem. I'm putting it back into uh, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Um, don't tell my wife that <laughs> she knows, but, um, you know, all of it I'm putting in to investing into our future. Um, all of us watch all of you watching and, uh, and my families, I'm putting it back in, uh, contributing to the community and giving back. So, um, that's where it goes if, in case you're curious. Um, and it's not like it's coming out of my ears or anything. It's, it's just a little bit here and there, but I just wanted to make sure you guys know what's happening with that. So I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and, uh, it means a lot to me more than you guys would know. Very inspiring. Um, I also want to say thanks. Uh, we blasted through 400 again. We went through over 400 subscribers now blowing my mind guys. We'll be at 500 probably tomorrow. And I really appreciate uh, all the uh, the comments. Again, I try to respond to every single one. So let's talk, have a conversation, keep keep it coming, keep sharing with me what you're learning, what you're finding. It's fascinating. You guys are so smart and amazing, and I appreciate it so much. 
Um, and with that, I think that's it. So um, I will see you in, in another video soon. Again, I'm going to be covering all of the uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure um, applications um, because there could be breaking news this weekend as well. Um, there's a, a bunch of Microsoft um, so Microsoft leadership at these events uh, giving speeches and on, they're on panels, etc. And uh, we really want to be on the lookout for any breaking news about uh, some of these apps going live because I'm going to be sharing with you guys in the next video about a bunch of them that aren't live, but we do know they're going to be live. They're going to launch. And with that launch comes a lot of exposure and awareness, and there's an, a, a potential investment opportunity with that as well. So uh, make sure you guys come back for that. And the best way is to subscribe. So make sure you subscribe, guys. I will see you soon. I'm going to go do some yard work and get sweaty. But then I'll be back after I take a shower, of course, to give you guys that this evening. So appreciate you so much. I'm going to let you go. As always, I am the king of dew. May the force be with you. Have a good day.